You may recall former President Trump recently claiming he could declassify documents, as he put it, just by thinking about it. In fact, the process of classifying or declassifying information is a lot more complicated than that. And therein, David Martin tells us, a problem. The documents spread out on the carpet at Mar-a-Lago, their classification markings clearly visible, are tiny drops in a tsunami of secrets kept by the U.S. government. Do you have any estimate of how many classified documents there are? That's really unknowable. John Fitzpatrick managed the flow of classified documents in both the Obama and Trump White Houses. He says the last reliable count was taken when most classified documents existed only on paper. They were in the tens of millions of documents a year. Has it become easier or harder to classify information? As a practical matter, it has become easier. The proliferation of classified computer networks provides an environment where the proliferation of classified material um, increases. The 9-11 attacks and all the subsequent alarms of terrorist plots against the homeland brought with them a surge of classification, which even worries the person in charge of keeping secrets. National Intelligence Director Avril Haines. Do you think that overclassification is a national security problem? I do, Senator. I do think it's a challenge. Earlier this year, she wrote, deficiencies in the current classification system undermine our national security by making it difficult to share information with allies and the public. It's a fairly arresting statement. The system designed to keep national security secrets is undermining national security. I agree with her. Tell me why you agree with her. There's a culture of classification. Protecting secrets is always better than releasing secrets. It's a false uh, binary, but it's the way people view it. Most secrecy is not about real damage. It's about preventing one form of embarrassment or another by the government. Top secret. Tom Blanton is director of the National Security Archive, which for the past 35 years has used the Freedom of Information Act to pry loose boxes upon boxes of previously classified documents. We've seen probably on the order of 10 to 20 million pages of declassified U.S. government documents over the years. The walls are lined with some of his favorites. This is a piece of internal CIA email about the torture program and specifically about how they destroyed the videotapes of the waterboarding. If tapes of the CIA's waterboarding of captured al-Qaeda operative Abu Zubaydah ever became public, the memo says, they would make us look terrible. It would be devastating to us. This document would have stayed classified indefinitely under the CIA's sources and methods protection. Do you file Freedom of Information Act uh, requests on a daily basis? About 1,500 a year. How many people are there out there who can classify documents? Almost 5 million. 5 million? 5 million. Today's classification system grew out of the secret project to build the atom bomb, arguably the greatest secret ever. The head of the project, Lieutenant General Leslie Groves, later wrote he was keeping it secret from the Germans, the Japanese, the Russians, all other nations, and those who would interfere, which included Congress. What General Groves created in the national security classification system was a big bang. And that universe is still expanding. The three basic levels of classification are confidential, secret, and top secret. Confidential information would cause damage to the national security if it got out. Secret would cause serious damage. And top secret, exceptionally grave damage. Beyond top secret, there is SCI, which stands for Sensitive Compartmented Information, also known as Special Access Programs. Those are considered the most closely held secrets of the government. Do you have any idea how many Special Access Programs there are? Um, I don't. Are we talking about a handful of programs, or are we talking about hundreds? Ultimately, you're talking about hundreds. Each special access program has its own code name. Here's a once top-secret memo directing that satellite photography must be handled in a separate compartment known as talent keyhole. A document like this would be kept in a room called a SCIF. Sensitive Compartmented Information Facility. There are 
physical standards for locking them, for alarming them, and soundproofing them. The best-known skiff is the White House Situation Room, where the president meets with his national security advisors. All the presidential libraries are equipped with skiffs, but there is no skiff at Mar-a-Lago. Does the president of the United States have a security clearance? The answer is no. The president derives his authority to see any classified information from his constitutional authorities. Is it assumed that the president has a need to know absolutely everything? It is. Can the president just flat out order a document to be declassified? Yes. The president's authority to classify or declassify information is derived from the same constitutional authority. When he was president, Donald Trump declassified the transcript of his phone call with Ukraine's President Zelensky, asking for help in digging up dirt on Hunter Biden. All of its original classification markings have been crossed out, and it is clearly stamped unclassified. Compare that with the documents the FBI spread out on the floor after their search of Mar Largo. There's not a line through those markings. There's not a stamp saying this is released on X date authority of somebody. Even when the president says, I want something declassified, there's a whole process it has to go through. Most documents are not declassified until long after they have been shipped to a presidential library like this one in Austin, Texas, where all the papers of Lyndon Johnson's administration are stored, and where more than half a century later, some still remain classified. Tom Blanton recently asked the George W. Bush Library to declassify the notes of the president's prep sessions for his first meeting with Vladimir Putin in 2001. Great moment in history. You know, this is 22 years ago when Putin was still our friend. Might even do us some good today in figuring out Putin's grievances and maybe some off-ramps out of this current tragedy in Ukraine that Putin started. When did you file this? In January. Of this year, so. Nice people down at the George W. Bush Library in Dallas said, sorry to tell you, Mr. Blanton, but it's gonna be 12 years before they get around to it. Which side is winning? The forces of classification or the forces of declassification? Oh, the forces of classification have long won.